window shopping. It's a waste of time. Barry, listen, my my clothes. They're, they're darned and mended to death. I'm embarrassed to go out in them. I don't go to the hairdressers or anything. Look, I'm not made of money, you know. No. I'm going to stretch my legs. Got enough money for beer, then? What? Nothing. What's got into you today? Hmm? Nothing, Barry. I am hungry. What about dinner? What about it? In the kitchen, you have the largest refrigerator in London. I'm without food. I told you before we got married, sweetie, I'm not the kind of girl that cooks. Then we must have servants. But no one will stay under the roof with you more than one day. It's under the same roof, Hector. I do wish you'd learn to speak English. <gasps> Very joyous. And book a table if you're hungry. I would like to eat in my own house sometime. But if I'm such a useless wife, perhaps you should divorce me. Do not start this divorce nonsense again. Oh, face it, heck. We made a terrible mistake. We're bored rigid with each other. I am not bored with you. Stop it, heck. You know, I can't stand it when your hands start wandering. It is not wandering. It is a husband who would like normal relations with his wife. Normal relations, that is such a repellent phrase. And I cannot divorce you. I am Catholic, as you know. All right. I'll divorce you. It's not against my religion. All you have to do is give me the grounds. Grounds? What are grounds? A reason, sweetie. All you have to do is pay a woman to spend a night with you in a hotel. That is all I do. Antonia, I am not the complete chump. I know you. It is not just divorce you want. You want costs and maintenance forever and ever so that you can eat in restaurants and buy expensive clothes. I am a good businessman. I know what is a bad deal. And that is a bad deal. Darling, I'm terribly sorry. Have you been waiting long? No, not oh, at all. Good way. <laughs> Come on, this way. I don't even know where you live. Sort of a uh, Pimlico way. Oh, one of those little terraced houses. Over there, sweet. Oh, I must come and visit you. Oh, please don't. I'd die of shame. Did you tell Barry you bumped into me? No, yeah, actually. Good. Why? Rose, bumping into you is about the best thing that's happened to me in ages. It's an omen. It means things are going to get better from now on for both of us. Come on, let's celebrate. Tea at the Buckingham. It's my treat. The, the, the Buckingham, I can't go to the Buckingham dress like this. Of course you can. Chin up, Corporal Mason. Best foot forward. Don't look now, darling, but there's a chap over there giving you the eye. But I very much doubt it. Over there, grey pinstripe, Clark gave a moustache. Show him a bit of stocking. See if he comes over. Antonia, he's asleep. Pretending to be, darling. While looking up, you're scared, imagining what he'd like to do to you. Oh, please stop it. You are the absolute limit. <laughs> do you ever have daydreams? Yes, yes, I suppose so. What about? Oh, silly things. Clothes, things like that. What about you? Oh, I daydream all the time. The best ones, Hector has some sort of fatal accident. Well, it's terrible. Oh, come off it, Rose. Don't tell me you don't daydream about life without good old Barry Bell. No, of course not. You, Rose, were a terrible liar, darling. So what's life like, being married to good old Barry? Well, let's face it, it was the Casino for a 651 squadron. It's better than it used to be. Still, there's a Friday nights there. And what happens Friday nights? Barry's creature of habit, Antonio. You know, he has his routine for everything. Even picking up girls. Darling, you can't be serious. It's just, he doesn't even bother to hide it anymore. Well, why on earth don't you divorce him? Well, I couldn't possibly. It would absolutely kill my parents. 
Oh, no, wait a minute. Your father was a vicar, wasn't he? Yes, that's right. He married us. It'd be the end of his life if I got a divorce. It sounds like Barry needs a fatal accident as well. See, the trouble with accidents is you never know when they're going to happen. Unless you sort of help them along, I suppose. What are you talking about? Oh, getting rid of our ghastly husbands. Wouldn't it be marvellous? <laughs> Don't look at me like that, darling. I'm not being serious, you know. Wake up. Had a few after work. It's all right. You don't have to explain. Mm. Weren't you worried about me? What do you mean? Well, I might have had an accident. I'm going to sleep in the spare room tonight, Barry. No, you're not. You're staying here with me. And that's an order. You bloody vicar's daughter. You need bringing down a peg or two. Oh, Barry, you hurting me. You thought I'd had an accident, didn't you? <laughs> Go on, say it. Oh, I thought, thought you'd had an accident, Al. <laughs> Were you buried? Yes, I was. Liar! You're fast asleep. I could be dead for all you care. I don't know what you want me to say, Don't Barry. say oh. I am a liar. Louder, so the neighbours can hear. I'm a liar. Accident. <laughs> Bloody accident proof, don't you know? Bloody Germans spend the whole war trying to kill me. You don't think I'm going to fall in front of a bus after coming through that lot, do you? Sanctimonious bitch. <laughs> Did you have a ghastly weekend? Oh, it's Barry. Oh, poor you. Did he have one of his Friday nights? Oh, my God. Rose? The brute? How long has this been going on? It's the first time he's laid a finger on me, I promise. I mean, he shouts and slams doors and that sort of thing, but... Never anything like this before. Rose, the trouble is, once they start, there is no stopping them. Darling, you need a drink. Have you got anything in the house? There's some brandy. Left over from Christmas. I hid it. Good girl. There's hope for you yet. Hello? May I speak to Wing Commander Bell, please? I'm afraid the Wing Commander's out. Who is this? 